Hi everyone, my name is Sienna and this is Sienna Reacts. So everyone knows the stereotype, oh Americans, they don't know anything else about the rest of the world and it's kind of true, it's true. So come with me as we learn more about other countries and other cultures together. So today we're going to be reacting to a little bit of geography now. Um, I think I'm going to make this a series because I'm really interested to learn more. Um, but the first one we're going to be reacting to is Germany. So I've never been to Europe, period. Um, I don't know much about Germany other than, you know, English is kind of like an offshoot in one of the dramatic languages. That's all I got. Um, yeah, I don't really know much. So let's learn more. Right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German <laughs> is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. <laughs> so we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one. Begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic Germany has island, or I don't know anything about Europe, let me not. <laughs> like, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundesland, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrupoint and the Venbon Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria, however there's a few more. The uh oh, maybe I should go back and watch the other ones first. Our town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest mm -hmm. way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs <laughs> became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism that happens a lot. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, oh. you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War I, the monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, mm -hmm. we get the Germany we have today. East Germany mm -hmm. consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can Really? Wait, so then how? So I know the wall came down in 89. Questionable. <laughs> Questionable. Um, but, but I know that it was like really intense in who could go, who could go where. Um, and like who could actually cross over. Like I've seen old videos of them like patrolling with guns. So how were people just able to like waltz into 
Berlin. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, oh. more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything, but there, I don't know what the Autobahn is. But no speed limit, yay. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south mm -hmm. by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Stuckspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland and after a millennia of civilization Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture of course happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country which is by the way kind of like Europe's tornado alley due to its position sandwiched between the arctic black. So then is it like so our um in the US our um tornado alley is also kind of considered like the bread basket or like the wheat basket um because you can a lot of wheat is grown in that area um so i guess it is agricultural land but like what are the crops that are um planted and kind of um like cultivated there in in that area is it also other like food staples or is there something like specific to germany like, what? <laughs> like, how does it work? Like, what is there? Blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Okay, that answers my question. <laughs> sure. Germans absolutely freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! <laughs> Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find spanfackel. Beer rain supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer i hate beer <laughs> beer after but, the czech republic but i do really want to try like the schnitzel that looks so good um it kind of reminds me of like the japanese like tonkatsu but i want to try schnitzel i don't think the ones that we get here are very good <laughs> public even their president has no problem with public intoxication oh. and austria germany is world renowned for their <laughs> beer which by the way follows the reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water hops malt and sometimes yeast nonetheless about 1300 breweries exist pumping out over 5000 brands the oldest continuously existing brewery in the world started by benedictine monks in 1040 ad can be found here germany takes the environment very you know so that's something for me um like as an american that's like so crazy about europe is how old everything is um because like in the u.s it, it started in technically like it started in like the 1700s right so all of our you know buildings are like government buildings and like big things right they are like two three hundred years old and then you think about Europe and they're like oh family business <laughs> since like the 1200s like it's it like the concept of the concept of history is so different um and i used to live in china so i do get s some of that like you know like you're walking around it's like oh yeah this <laughs> like these walls they're like a thousand years old whatever like let's keep going blah, blah blah you know um so it i do get in that way but it's still such a it's a different mindset you know i don't i don't even know how to put it
very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found. Oh, Germany is also the eagle, or that's a different type of eagle, but... Wow. Thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country <laughs> has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country- Wait, so US is number one, China is number two. Who's number three before- them would it be england i'm not sure actually i i don't know actually i just don't know. identifies as ethnic japan i don't know german 12 percent other europeans mostly polish italian dutch and so on turks make up about 3.5 percent asians at two percent and the rest are made up of other groups like africans and americans also they use the euro they use the c and f type outlets and they drive on the right side of the road germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse it is the strongest economy in the eu and makes up about 16 percent of the union's population it's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world after the united states germany is also the second most popular global migration destination germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or... Okay, so, <clears throat> for, like, the type of German, is it kind of like the U.S., or, I don't know, okay, so, in the U.S., everyone speaks English, like... There's like an American English. Everyone speaks American English. However, the real difference is in the accent rather than like a difference in words. Is it similar to that or is it like there's dialects that are different? As in, you know, there's like um, like African-American vernacular, AAVE, right? So it still uses English, but there's different ways that the um like the language is used so maybe there's like a difference in like auxiliary verbs or um just like <laughs> i used to be an english teacher sorry let me not do that um but there's like a difference in the format and like structure of words um and sentences and you know maybe there's like a couple of different like new words thrown in here and there um but it's still it's still English. Is it that? Is it that? Or is it is it A A V E? Or is it just like um, like Southern English, like Southern American English versus like people from New York or Boston or versus people from California? That type of thing. What's the? Where's the difference? High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, Norddeutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholic, Carnival celebrations, are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also yeah. known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the 
record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. <laughs> Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated like- Oh my god. <laughs> One of the reasons I don't want to learn <laughs> German is just like how long the words can get. It, it's For me, it's also like like Japanese in that there, there's just like so much to get your mouth around. It's too much. <laughs> this is because many words are merthudig or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, <laughs> this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this some don't but either way it's here to stay About oh my god <laughs> 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, yeah. the rest are mostly not yeah, but like I I know who that is. <laughs> agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about five percent, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus, rounding up the remainder one percent. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened, to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Oh. Realschule. Wait, why is it called gymnasium? <laughs> <laughs> in Eng like in like American English, if you say gymnasium, it's like a, a place where you go like it's like a, a room in your school where you go to like play sports. So when you have like PE, you go to the gymnasium or um, like if you're playing like basketball or volleyball or something, you go to the gymnasium to play. Why is it? What's the difference? I don't know. Uh, uh, middle ground type. Did we just like take it and use it randomly? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> school and Hopschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in trade school. In specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and even more than like Korea now or huh? culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras, mostly supported by public money. And artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride. And unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! <laughs> that's not, that's not the way that it is in America. People have like, it's on shirts, people put it on their cars, people have like flagpoles outside of their house, they have it on their shoes, they have it on their car, it's ridiculous. Anyway, whatever. They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany. And they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech. Others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American. During the war, yay. Oh, sorry. Johannes Kepler, <laughs> Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. 
<clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, Woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, <laughs> the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two <laughs> have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flash... So, like, E... What is it? German, Germany had, I don't, okay. I don't know how the EU works, but from what I know, like prior to Angela Merkel stepping down and like the new president going in, she was kind of like the leader person, or maybe it wasn't like her specifically, maybe it was Germany. Um, but she was kind of like the head of like the EU people. Um, and then now it's Macron. I don't know if I said that right, but he's become the next person. Um, who's taken over. Ashy sp right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state, Ghana. Germany has ties to Ghana is coming up next. Yay. Okay. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you watch to the end, um, if you do have any answers to some of the questions that I asked, please put them down below. Um, please let me know if you like this type of video i do kind of want to make like its own playlist and have it it be kind of its own series um but yeah let me know what you think if you like it if you don't like it whatever um but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great day um and please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time so bye bye